In the last video, we saw that the chair conformation of a cyclohexane was its most stable conformation, and that every cyclohexane has two possible chair conformations that interconvert by ring flips. These ring flips take axial groups and flip them to equatorial positions, and vice versa, without changing their general up or down directionality. In order to clearly distinguish between these ring-flipped versions of chairs, we need a clear, unambiguous way to represent chair conformations. We draw chairs in a very specific way, as if we're viewing it from the side, in a sort of perspective drawing. The carbons in the ring are shown in sort of a lightning bolt shape, with the carbons that are farther away being drawn on the top of the lightning bolt and the nearer carbons below them. We draw the axial substituents coming out of each carbon vertically, and they alternate up and down as we go around the ring. Wherever we have an axial substituent pointing up, the other substituent is equatorial and angling downward. We draw them like this. And wherever we have an axial substituent pointing down, the other group is equatorial and angling upward, like this. There are a few things to note about this drawing. The CC bonds opposite each other are drawn parallel, so the chair itself has three sets of parallel lines. And no carbon atoms are drawn directly above or below another. The equatorial substituents on each side make a W or M and the direction of the axial substituent at a given location corresponds to the angle of the carbon it's coming out of. This part of the chair is angling up, so its axial substituent is up, while this part of the chair is angling down, so its axial substituent is down. So if this is one chair conformation of a given cyclohexane, how do we draw its ring-flipped version? There are two approaches to this, but we'll only cover one in this video. To draw a ring flip, we take the two tips of the chair we've drawn and flip them. This one goes down, and this one goes up, to give us a chair that looks like this. Then we add in all the substituents, remembering that ring flips takes, take axial substituents and put them equatorial, and vice versa, but the up or down directionality doesn't change. Let's show this with an example. Trans 1-bromo-3-tert-butyl cyclohexane has this structure. Let's draw one of its chair conformations. We know from the original drawing that the bromine is up since it's on a wedged bond, so let's arbitrarily choose to put it axial and up in our first chair. Now we go clockwise around the ring to carbon number 3. At this location, we'll put our t-butyl group down, since it's on a dashed bond in the original drawing. And at this location, the downward-pointing substituent is equatorial. Now let's draw the other possible chair conformation of this compound, after a ring flip. We'll take the two ends and flip them so that our new chair looks like this. Now the bromine is equatorial up, and the t-butyl group is axial down. Often, we're asked to evaluate the relative stability of two chair conformations. We do this by remembering that big groups prefer to be equatorial, so that they, so that they can get a, as far away from other substituents as possible. Tert-butyl groups are so bulky that they have an extraordinarily strong preference for being equatorial. So this conformation is the more stable one. 